Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is from Paul's letter to the, to the Philippians, chapter 2, especially verses 8 through 11. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we made it. It's Palm Sunday. We celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus with palm branches waving and passionate shouts of Hosanna. In one more week, the solemn season of Lent will be over, and we might return to whatever was our passion before Ash Wednesday. If we gave up something for Lent, you and I may return to it next Sunday. All we have to do is make it past Good Friday and get to Easter Sunday. Seeing that today is also the Sunday of the Passion, I would like to talk about our passions. What is your passion? Did you happen to give that up for Lent? I suppose we should first define the word passion. Most of the definitions that I saw for passion define it as an extremely strong feeling, desire, or emotion. So then with that thought, what is our passion? Is it spending time with family or friends? Do you and I plan events with great passion? Maybe it's the upcoming Easter weekend, a baptism, a confirmation, a birthday, a graduation, a wedding, a family reunion, or a trip? Are you filled with passion with the spring and summer outdoor events like bicycling, motorcycling, playing baseball or softball, swimming, golfing, fishing, boating, camping, grilling, or gardening? Do we passionately await the leisure time spent and our enjoyment for baseball, golf, and fishing or excitedly pull out the bikes, campers, tents, boats, and grills and start planning our time outside or at the lake? Have we gotten the seeds ordered, plants purchased, and the garden tilled so that it can be planted and fertilized as we dream of the tasty vegetables or the beautiful flowers to come? These activities are wonderful opportunities and blessings from God for us to show our passion for his creation, the world, our family, friends, and neighbors. But do we also have a secret passion? Maybe one that only God knows about. Or maybe it's one that isn't a secret. Possibly, everyone can see our passion, and they know all about it. It could very well be the topic of conversation in the community or at coffee. Hey, have you heard about so-and-so? When it comes to our sinfulness, you and I have great passion also. We have an extremely strong feeling, desire, and emotion to think, say, and do things that we shouldn't. 
and we're very passionate about passion, about our passions. You and I are extremely self-centered about our sins. It's all about what we want. It's an I problem of passion. I want, I sin. So what is our passion? Is it the sin of sexual immorality? Do we live and act as God's children prior to, during, and after marriage? And if we are currently married, have you and I kept our marriage vows? Is our passion money or power or pride? Will we do almost anything to get more or to look better by taking advantage of anyone and everyone who crosses our path? Is the passion of our life a harmful, addictive habit? Are we controlled by an unhealthy desire for tobacco, drugs, alcohol, or gambling? Or do we overeat or shop too much? Can we go even one day without passionately gossiping or cursing or speaking poorly about our boss, co-workers, governmental leaders, and other authorities? Do we steal, cheat, lie, and covet things with great passion, especially things that we don't need or deserve? Do we complain and grumble against God about our health, our wealth, the weather, or anything else by showing our failure to be content with God's bountiful and gracious blessings? You name it, the passions of our sinfulness abound. Our sinful passion might even involve the wonderful activities that I have mentioned earlier. Do we take the summer off from God and hearing his precious word by spending more time in a boat, on the dock, or at the lake? Do our passions include more time in the camper, or the tent, or in the dirt and grass, or on the bike trail, golf course, or ball field? than it does in his house and in Bible study? Are the family get-togethers a disaster of passions? Because some of us just can't keep our mouths quiet, or are bossy, or quarrelsome, or unforgiving and spiteful. Do any of our passions or plans ever include any thought of our loving God and his will for us and all people? Do we think about what our almighty and gracious God has done for us? Do you and I realize his passion? The sermon text taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians shows two states of Christ and reveals his passion. One of the other definitions of passion is one that the dictionary listed as obsolete. The obsolete meaning for passion was only one word, suffering. We see Christ humble himself and endure the punishment for all of our sins and suffer for us. We see his passion in Christ's state of humiliation. Christ came down from heaven to earth and took on human form, his incarnation. He came as the baby in the manger and grew to manhood. And because of God the Father's love for us and the Son's love and obedience to the Father, Christ suffered humiliation. He was humiliated as his disciple, Judas, betrayed him, 
as he is arrested, as his disciples deserted him, as his disciple Peter denied him, and as he is unjustly tried for blasphemy. His humble suffering and passion continued as he heard the crowd's hosannas turn to crucify him. As he endured the soldiers mocking and beating and torture, as he suffered anguish, hurt, and pain, as he is insulted and mocked during his crucifixion, and finally in passion and humiliation, he died a God-forsaken death. We too betray, desert, and deny our God when we search for ways to fulfill our sinful passions. But thankfully, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. That, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is passion. Jesus Christ is humiliated in his passion to save you and me and all mankind from our sinful passions so that we may have eternal life. So was Jesus' passion one of suffering or one of an extremely strong feeling, desire, or emotion? It is both. Our Savior suffered humiliation, pain, and death because of his extremely strong feeling, desire, and emotion. Christ Jesus suffered so we would no longer be separated from God because of our sinful passions. He suffered because of his love for the Father and his love for us. His passion is his love for you. Our Lord desires for us to be with him at the Father's side with the angels and the archangels and all the saints in heaven evermore praising God and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Christ Jesus' state of exaltation began with his glorious victory over sin, death, and the devil on Easter morning. And his exaltation continues forever. As Paul states, Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank God that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank God for his passion. Thank God for the solemn season of Lent and Palm Sunday. Thank God for Holy Week and Good Friday. Thank God for Easter morning. Thank God for the grace and the love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank God for his word and sacraments. Thank God for the church. Thank God for you. May each of us, with passion, bow our knees and with our tongues confess our passion that Jesus Christ is Lord to, to the glory of God the Father. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Amen. Please stand. 
the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, whose passion was to suffer, to die, and to rise again because of the love of God for each of us. Amen.